Rack it up, rack it up, I got a bit of the bank to make me a safe house. Shake it up, shake it up, she got her hands on her knees and she bringing a cake out. Smoke it up. Quit playing. Robert. I didn't do this stuff. This is not me, y'all. I'm fighting for my life. R. Kelly is going to prison. The question is, for how long? A jury today convicted the R&B star on all counts, all nine of the racketeering and sex trafficking charges against him. They found R. Kelly guilty of being the ringleader of a decades-long scheme to recruit and groom women, underage girls and boys, to sexually exploit them for his own benefit. What's up, y'all? It's Rhonda Lynn with the Social Therapy Podcast. What's up? This is our debut episode on YouTube, okay? Now, we got other episodes if you go to the podcast channel, but normally on YouTube, I just post a little two-minute, three-minute clips or whatever, and I be on about my way because those be like my TikTok and my IG clips. But today, we doing a whole episode because I need to grow this YouTube channel out, okay? We need to make this happen. You got to start somewhere. So we starting here today, talking about R. Kelly and the bull mess. Yes, bull mess. <laughs> okay, but before we go any further, let me go ahead and shout out our sponsor real quick because they pay for everything. Sugar Pop Cafe, it's a coffee, online coffee cafe or whatever. They have the best coffee I've ever had. I'm talking about smooth, non-acidic, it's not toxic, it's GMO free, it don't mess your stomach up. And not only that, it's like it's got like this deep flavor that just it just takes you there. I mean, it does it for me. It does it for me. Okay, so make sure you check out Sugar Pop Cafe. All right, now back to business. Today we are talking about R. Kelly. It's the hottest thing in the news right now. You know, you know I had to give my opinion on this, okay? I mean, come on. Okay, I got something to say. Okay, if you'd like to hear it, here it go. Okay, so first of all, let's go ahead and let's jump into this real quick. So, my first question to y'all is, whose side are you on? Okay, are you on the Pied Piper side or are you on the victim side? The young girls, the young boys, the women's. Okay, whose side are you on or are you on the fence? My next question is, are you still listening to his music? That's what I want to know, okay? I mean, don't get me wrong. The man is talented. He's pure talent, okay? He is a musical genius. Anything he touches turns gold. I'm talking about the sparkly gold that makes you be like, oh, ooh, okay? Everything, but... You can't let that blind. Who is he as a man? And because of that, knowing what I know of him, I personally, I can't enjoy his music, okay? Because I keep thinking that this song is about an underage, it's about someone underage. It's about a young child he's singing about, somebody's baby. And just that by itself turns me off. It turns me off. And you know what kind of music he make. I mean, people making babies to that music. I think I might have made myself. Anyways. <laughs> Let's get to it, okay? Let's get to it. But, but still, think about it. Whose side are you on? Most people have already decided. You're going to know what side I'm on by the time I finish this episode. So, But anyways, um, as we all know, R. Kelly was recently found guilty on all counts. Okay, like guilty, 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 and some more guilty. During his trial, which I believe was like about 21 days or so, about 50 witnesses took the stand to testify against him. And a lot of people say that, you know, he had already lost a court of public opinion because of the Surviving R. Kelly series, which I personally did not watch because that kind of stuff. I just don't like that kind of stuff. I don't like watching stuff like that. I don't watch. I don't like watching um, movies or things about people being abused in any kind of way. It's a trigger for me. Uh, it ruins my night. I don't sleep well, especially if it's something that goes into detail. 
I'm a visionary person, right? I'm very vision oriented. I can literally like see it in my head. I can visualize it in my mind and it's disturbing. And I try to keep my peace in check. So I'm good. But even though I didn't watch Surviving R. Kelly, that doesn't mean that over the years, there hasn't been enough information out there to conclude that the charges were far-fetched. Put it like that, okay? So let's go over a couple of things real quick. Uh, so he was convicted on over nine counts. Um, they were investigating him for like 25 years. And really, if you do the math, right? They started investigating him back when Aaliyah was under his wing, okay? They've been looking at him. He got on their radar a long time ago. I'm only 39 years old, okay? So 25 years ago, let's see, 39 minus 20 is 19 minus 5 is 14. So back when I was about 14 years old, that's when they started investigating him. And that's when Aaliyah was on the scene. And you know what? I remember like... I went to one of his concerts when he came to Chicago, but no, I live in Chicago, but my mom took me to one of his concerts when I was in the eighth grade, which is like around that time. And, you know, sometimes I just be thinking like, you know, I'm glad we was in the back. <laughs> I don't care what you said. I was cute. Little skinny, scrawny little thing. Okay. I was a little thing. Little. 80 pounds soaking wet or whatever, but still. I looked young as hell. Okay, I'm just glad we, we our seats was in the back, in the middle, where he couldn't, him and his peoples couldn't see me. Okay, who knows what would have happened? I'm just saying, who knows? But anyways, child, okay? <sighs> I don't know what to think about it. <laughs> Ooh, got me choking over here. I'm still recovering from COVID, y'all. I'm still catching my breath. But anyways, okay, so um, 17 years ago, he walked, he walked, okay? There was a trial 17 years ago with Sparkle's knees. There was a video. It was blurry. They said it was his brother. His brother said that it wasn't him recently in the last couple of years. Anyways, long story short, he walked. And I believe that when he walked, the government, the state... The feds, whomever, was like, you know what? I'll be damned, okay? We're going to build a case. We're going to watch him. We're going to let him think that he's scot-free. He's going to get comfortable, and we're just going to be taking notes. And that's exactly what they did, okay? Now, the surviving R. Kelly, it didn't help. It helped them, you know, put a little fire underneath them because people were starting to wonder, like, for real? Y'all just gonna let him get away with this? Okay. That's all it takes. Okay. So now, um, <clears throat> he's facing a minimum of 10 years to life, you guys. This man is 54 years old. And he's facing 10 years to life off of one case. And that's the New York case that he just lost. He still has a he still has a federal case in Chicago. He still has a state case with Illinois. And I believe another state case with Michigan. Because you know Illinois and Michigan like this. They they like best cousins, okay? Like you are constantly going over the border when you live up here in the Chicago area. You constantly over in Michigan. You constantly over in Indiana. It, everything is like right there. Okay, so it only makes sense that he has a case in Michigan. I'm surprised he doesn't have one anywhere else, but it's not my business, I guess. Make my business. If it's out there, it's my business. So, um, if he, you know, faces the same type of time, he will most definitely be in there for life. I mean, if you think about it, he's 54. If he does the minimum off of New York, he'll get out at 64. Let's say he get 10 years in off the federal case in chicago 74 10 years off the state case in illinois 84 
Michigan, 94. Y'all, he going to have to serve these sentences consecutively, okay? And they're not just going to try him all like boom, boom, boom. He's going to have these cases going on while he's in jail serving a sentence, right? So it's like New York, then Chicago, then Illinois, then Michigan, transfer, 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 okay? Like, he gonna be doing some moving around if he make it that long. I don't know what his health look like, though, okay? But karma's a bitch. It is. But sentencing for this case that he just had will be in May of 2022, and I don't believe that he's going to be let out while he's waiting for sentencing because he was in jail with no bail before the case even started. Okay, so tell me what you think. So let's 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 do the scenario real quick, okay? So 17 years ago, he won that case. He got out, he became more sophisticated about how he did what he do, okay? Now, if he had won this case and won each case that is to come, don't you think that he would become even more sophisticated in how he runs what he do and how he do it, okay? Because every experience we have, whether it's good or bad, is a learning opportunity, is a learning experience. That's why it's called wisdom that's why it's called experience right you get a job they pay well they want you to have x amount of years of experience because of what you bring to the table and what r kelly brings to his own table is the experience of how he got caught up and how not to get caught up again in the same way and that means that if he were to have gotten off like a lot of people feel like he should have just because he's black, he would definitely be a monster in these streets. I don't think we, we need that. There's enough monsters out here with less experience, okay? Now, one thing I wanna talk about is like, you know, a lot of people, they don't see nothing wrong with this man talking to these young girls i have heard the argument that you know your great grandmother was 15 and big daddy was 30 and my response to that is it's not okay okay yeah big mama was 15 when big daddy hopped on her and married her and put 20 babies in her and beat her up and abused her but because it was okay 50 60 years ago we're supposed to give this man a pass in today's world? Do you hear yourself? I mean, 50, 60 years ago, there was barely telephones. There was barely TVs, okay? There was no internet, okay? There was no social media, okay? So you got to think about it, y'all. Back then, before things got hyped up the way they are now, your view of a celebrity was what the is what the tv told you it was i mean all celebrities have like image consultants pr all that stuff right and so a lot of you know a lot of of the stars back then they led wretched lives and nobody knew about it because the persona that they put off for everyone to see was so perfect and people fell in love with them. And so I, to me, it seems like this generation of people who are used to judging a celebrity based off of their talent have a hard time separating the talent from the person, okay? And when you are basically conditioned to view a person in a certain way, it's hard to let go. But our generation these days, and we see both sides of the story right from the beginning. And we are getting a dose of your personality from you, okay? 
You, the celebrity, are on social media. You, the celebrity, are going live. There are bloggers. There is um, radio. There is all this stuff that's letting us know what you be on when you're not in the studio. Okay? And back when R. Kelly first started these shenanigans, social media and radio and talk television one popping like it is now so we knew you know it was kind of trickling out a little bit of what he might be on but it wasn't sure and there wasn't enough evidence because that's not the way things worked back then you know but it's how it works now and because that's the way things work now you know it has been able to bring this man to justice do you realize that R. Kelly is the first person to be prosecuted for crimes against brown women, brown children, brown girls, okay? We are not normally heard. We're not normally believed, okay? We are just so hypersexualized that we are automatically the victim and the aggressor all in one whenever something happens and you are disregarded based off your skin color this has never happened before this is a win for brown girls everywhere so whether you agree with his conviction or not this is showing how the world is starting to change and how we have we're starting to get our voice Okay, we are starting to be seen. We are starting to be heard. Okay, we are starting to be acknowledged. Okay, it's that's a big jump, a big leap in history from where we were just not too long ago. Okay, so it's like you want to compare his case against Harvey Weinstein and the Playboy Mansion dude. I can't think of his name right now. You know what? If those had been black girls, you wouldn't even know their names, okay? And we have to think about the fact like this. We as brown people, as black people, have never been equal to our fairer skin counterparts, okay? So I don't understand why anyone can try to compare R. Kelly's case to the case of someone else of a different nationality who got away with it, okay? When have we ever been on the same level? We're still not. We still got to work harder, you know? We still have to prove ourselves every day, okay? We are still judged off the way we look before we are judged off of our capabilities. So how, how can you expect them, anyone, okay, to be like, well, Elvis Presley, R. Kelly. Hmm. Wash, it's a wash. No, it's not a wash. They're not the same. They're not the same. They're not going to be treated the same. They never was going to be treated the same. When he made the conscious decision as an adult to break the law in order to satisfy his own gratification, he knew what he was doing and he did it anyway. Now, a lot of people want to say, well, you know, he was abused. It happened to him. He should not be convicted when he's a victim himself okay if that's the case then are you saying that the people that he victimized should be able to abuse the next generation of people without being judged for it in peace you know like then you're just creating generations of abusers you know what i'm saying it's like oh well you know he abused her she abused him he abused her 
he abused her, she abused him, and it just keeps going. And it's a cycle that never ends because hurt people hurt people. And because this person was hurt, he should get a pass and we should never stop him. Even though they know that what they're doing is wrong. Because if they didn't know that it was wrong, they wouldn't cover it up. They wouldn't be sneaking people in through the back. Then, you know, I get on social media and I see people saying, well, you know, it was grown women. It was grown women in this trial or whatever. It wasn't just kids. It was grown women. First of all, age, just because you're an adult doesn't mean you can't be assaulted, right? Just because you're over the age of 18 or you're at the age of consent does not mean that you cannot be taken advantage of, does not mean that someone, that all of a sudden, anything that's done to you is consensual. You know, abuse is abuse, regardless of, how, of what age you are. I mean, if I decided to engage with someone three times and then somewhere in between that third time and the next time I see you in that context, you say something to me or do something to me that turn me off and I don't like you no more, you're not entitled to me. So at that point, since you're no longer entitled to me because I said, no, don't touch me. I'm good. You know, I'm good. If you, in any kind of way, try to coerce me into doing something I don't want to do, try to get me drunk, try to have me inebriated, you know, um, or just, you know, just be forceful with me or whatever, you just assaulted me. And I'm a grown woman. Assaulted. So, this case is about him being an abuser, whether it be to young, underage, not at the age of consent girls or older women who are of the age of consent, okay? And because they have been, you know, watching him for the last 25 years, these charges just kept racking up. They knew more than we knew. They knew more than they put in that, that, that what is it, lifetime special or whatever. They knew more than that. Okay, so then, you know, I'm having conversations with people and they're like, oh, these girls was fast, right? I knew what they was doing. Excuse me. First of all, if the girls are fast, okay, let's just say they are. Let's say 13, 14, 15, 16 year old girls are being fast. Okay. That means that they should be attracting 14, 15, 16, 17 year old boys. Okay. There's no level of fast that should be attractive to a grown man. In a video that is that clear, <laughs> but there's no mistaking of whether or not it's him or not. What is there to deliberate on? You know, I'm just saying. So, um, throughout the course of the case, there were 14 underlying acts that supported him being tried for racketeering, which is basically the RICO Act. And some of those underlying acts were kidnapping, forced labor, sex trafficking, bribery, and more. That's just to name a few, right? So, you might be asking, like, what is racketeering? Well... Racketeering is a dishonest and fraudulent business dealing, such as extortion or cohesion, okay? So then you might ask, like, well, what's the RICO statue? Aren't they the same? They are, but they're not, okay? So basically, the RICO statute is, like, it's racketeering in an organized crime type of manner, Right? So basically, it's like a crime ring. It's like um, like a business, right? So um, most people are a little confused. I know I was until I did a little research that um, the RICO is normally associated with money. And it was first initiated because of the mob, you know. But basically, it, basically it confers to business dealings right and when you have a business 
you cannot, there's no limit to what compensation can be considered as. So even though compensation is typically money, it can be other things too. You know, you can barter for acts of service. And if you're bartering acts of service, well, then that's where the forced labor comes in at, the bribery, you know, stuff like that, right? That's why I think that um, once this is all over, all of his victims should have, should be awarded like free therapy for life and their children too, because it's a lot, it's a lot. And you know, people are not well after they have traumatic experiences. And a lot of people who went through things as children, traumatic experiences, or, or even as adults, they take a lot of their frustrations out on their family members, on their kids. And in order for you to be able to process that properly and know that, you know, maybe your parent asks this, you're going to need some therapy too as the child of the abused person. You know, just because he is convicted or found guilty doesn't automatically make the victim no longer a victim. It doesn't make the experience go away. They need to be helped. And that should just be part of it. I don't know what they would get from this type of case or not, but I just think that should be like a requirement. Like if you were a victim, you need to go to therapy for life and people who are like in your immediate circle. I'm just saying. Let's just be honest. There's gonna be PTSD. There's gonna be survivor's remorse. There's going to be a victim mindset, right? There's, there's just a lot of mental anguish that people are gonna be trying to process through by themselves. And how many people do you know that have been through something and they just, should seek out some assistance or whatever right so you know see some kind of help group or something but anyway let's get back to it so um it was a part of the employee's job responsibilities to get girls women's boys and recruit them for him um this was not a one-man show okay and they also put these people into the position that he wanted them to be in in order to satisfy his wants and needs and desires and because this was part of their job responsibility um yeah he's running it like a business i mean what else do you call it it's your job you're doing it that's why i believe that the other people in his organization who took part in this they should be convicted of something you know because he couldn't have done all of this by himself without help i'm just saying they should definitely all be convicted you know his wife recently came out and she's getting a lot of backlash people are saying that she was a part of it you know she was a victim too you know um the stuff that she has been vocal about as far as her experiences goes you know she was trauma bonded to him she was fearful. He did a lot of stuff to her. And that's the thing about like soul ties, trauma bonds, that kind of stuff. It's a mental thing. It's a chemical thing. You will find yourself participating in doing things that while you're doing it, while you're going through it, while it's happening to you, you are literally asking yourself, why am I doing this? What in the heck? What am I doing here? I don't want to do this, but you're doing it. And you're upset with yourself afterward. And I could just imagine that maybe that's what she was going through. Or maybe she wasn't. I don't know. I don't know. I wasn't there or whatever. You know, I hope that she wasn't just as bad as he was. She got daughters too. It's just weird to me. All of it is. But speaking of parents and having kids, it, you know, it's, it's kind of being said that some of these parents received compensation for their daughters. And, you know, it's kind of like, you know, does the government want to 
you know, use the resources and the time to go after the parents and, you know, convict them for their part in being negligent, right? And allowing their underage daughters um, to go with a grown ass man for days and weeks at a time without without them being there. But then there's people who are saying like he, like he was paying them. They were receiving money. And as soon as, you know, the money stopped, they started talking. I think that it would be worth the time to look into some of the parents' financials to verify if they received any monetary compensation or kickbacks or houses or cars or anything like that you know for their daughters being with r kelly and if they were then they should be tried and convicted for it because it is illegal in our country the usa to sell your children because like i said compensation doesn't have to be money it could be anything it could be bartering for services and so lastly, I want to touch on the Mans Act, which was another uh, count that he was convicted on. And basically, the Mans Act says that you cannot transport underage girls or women across state lines for sexual gratification. It was initially started to curb sex trafficking. And unfortunately for him, if he transported anybody over a state line that was underage that he was having sexual gratification with it qualifies for the man act okay so we're just gonna have to see how this plays out you guys like i said by the end of this video you would know where i stand with it it's not a popular opinion but that's my opinion and this is my platform <laughs> this is my channel so this is how i feel about it if anything else does you know come up and i feel like it warrants my opinion i'll be right here with it but in the meantime make sure you guys subscribe to my channel okay yes i'm asking for subscribers because i need at least a hundred i think so i can go live because i would have rather have done this live than like this or whatever so um like i said but you got to start somewhere i'm just getting started y'all we just get started yeah <laughs> Make sure you follow and like this channel, and I will see you guys next week. All right. Yes, Randy Watson. <laughs> that boy is good. Mm-hmm.